So for those who were not there the last Wednesday, we are reading by Guru Del Will this book here, which is called The Saints of Raj. And in which there are stories of saints, mainly Gaudiya Vaishnav saints, who lived in Vrindavan, mainly in the 18th century, 19th century. And Guru say that this is one of the most things that we can do to read the story of the saints and to learn how they were living, how they were practicing, how they got realization, so that we can also get inspiration in our day to day practice. So we have reached up to the third story, chapter three. The third story is of Sri Jai Krishna Das Babaji. Bhakti is a gravitational force that works at two hands. He throws the Bhakta to Bhagavan and Bhagavan to the Bhakta. Bhagavan is thrown to the Bhakta because he relishes the bliss flowing from Bhakti in the heart of the Bhakta even more than the bliss flowing from the nature of his own self. As soon as the flower of Bhakti blossoms in the art of a devotee, Bhagavan Krishna, like the black bee, is drawn by its fragrance. The flower of Bhakti blossomed in the heart of Baba Jai Krishna Das of Kamyavan in Raj. And Krishna could not restrain himself from rushing up to him. Jai Krishna Das Baba was a Gaudiya Vaishnav saint in the line, in the line of Sri Gangamath Goswami of the Gangamath Math of Puri. No one knows anything about his guru or the place to which he belonged before he came to Raja. He practiced sadhana under a tree on the banks of Vimal Kund in Kamyaban, a forest which is now partly converted into a village. He was generally respected as a saint of very high order. But the coward boys who came to Kamyaban for pastoring cows often teased him. He therefore thought of shifting to a quieter place where he could practice his sadhana undisturbed. But this was regarded as an evil omen by the residents of Kanyavan. So they built a small cottage for him to live. Baba Jai Krishna Das did Java and meditation all day and night. There was hardly any sleep for him. Sleeping and waking are the functions of the physical body. The saints of the time of Baba Jai Krishna Das who had risen with the body and spiritual self neither sleep nor keep awake. They live in a higher dimension of consciousness. Kanyaban at that time was within the domain of the Raja of Bharatpur. The Raja had heard about the spiritual attainments of Jai Krishna Das and was anxious to see him. But all his efforts to, to see him failed because Baba would not meet a man like him who was sunk deep into worldly affairs. Baba used to go to the village of Bukhari every evening. One day, while he was out, the Raja 
in the guise of an ordinary farmer, went and sat at the door of his cottage. It was time for Baba to return, but he had only come out the way when suddenly he stopped and turned. He went back to the village and cried aloud, Friends, my cottage is on fire. Go and extinguish the fire. The villagers ran to Baba's cottage. They were surprised to see that there was no fire, but the Raja was sitting there in the guise of a farmer. With folded hands, they advised the Raja not to persist in his effort to see Baba against his will. For no one, howsoever, great or powerful could make him do anything against his will. The Raja resigned himself to the will of Baba. He returned to his palace unoffended, but with a changed heart. The incident made him realize the futility of his power and wealth. He became humble and free from worldly attachment. Baba then showered his blessings upon him. Baba had been practicing devotion to Krishna for a long time. He was unhappy and restless because Krishna had not yet blessed him with his darshan. One day, when his Krishna Viraha, the separation from Krishna, had reached its climax, a large number of power boys gathered around Vimalpun. The boys knocked at Baba's door, but there was no reply. They cried out aloud, Baba, we are thirsty, give us water. But Baba did not listen. He thought, the boys had come only to disturb him. The boys shouted again, Oh, Bengali Baba, what bhajan do you perform? What is the use of your bhajan if it makes you so heartless? Why can't you come out and give us water? Don't you know that it is an apparat offense? to turn away thirsty persons from one's door. Baba then came out with a stick in hand. But as soon as he opened the door, he was surprised to see so many boys, each surpassing the other in beauty and radiance, and so many beautiful cows, such as he had never seen before. His anger subsided. He asked one of the boys with a peg of feather on his crown, Where do you live? I live in Nandagal, the boy replied. What is your name? My name is Kaneya. Baba then asked another boy standing by his side, What is your name? Baladao. The other boy replied, Kaneya said, Baba, first give us water. Our throats are so parched that we cannot talk. Baba did not have any cups or glasses. Therefore, the boys cut their hands and Baba poured water into them from his caravan. As Kaneya was drinking water, Water fell like a stream on the ground instead of falling into his hands. Neither he nor Baba was conscious of it. Each absorbed in looking at the other like one enchanted, for such was the spell of their love for each other. It was only when the other boys laughed and clapped their hands to see this, that they came to their own, and the exercise of giving and receiving water 
could be performed properly. Kaneya then say, look, Baba, we come here from a long distance every day, then return Thursday. We shall now be coming to you every day. Kindly also give some refreshments for us. Baba say, no, no, don't come to disturb me again. Immediately, he went in and shut the door. But there was something so mysteriously attractive in the voice that he had hardly shut the door. He was tempted to open it again to have another look at them. To his surprise, he found that the cover boys and the cows had all disappeared. Where could they have gone in just a moment? What, was it all a dream or hallucination? It could not be a dream, for Baba was fully awake. It could not be hallucination, for it was even more vivid and real than anything that I had met his eyes before. Besides, the sweet, the somewhat maddening fragrance of the bodies of the cover bodies still filled the air. And the water which had spilled on the ground was also there. Suddenly, the consciousness dawned upon Baba that Kaneya and Baladao were actually Krishna Balaram, whom he has been worshipping. A current of bhav, ecstatic love, and bhakti ran through his body. Tears flowed from his eyes. He was overwhelmed with joy and emotion at the thought that he had seen Krishna, the tracer of his heart, and the soul of his soul. But the joy turned into grief when the thought came to his mind that he had, like a fool, asked Krishna not to come again. The grief was so unbearable that his heart would have burst. But Krishna never fails his devotee when the pangs of separation become unbearable to him. He appeared before Baba with an enchanting smile on his face. But he appeared only to disappear again. Before disappearing, he said, Baba, I shall come to you tomorrow and never leave again. The next day, an old woman came to Baba with a Sri Murti of Gopal and said, Baba, I have become old. I cannot serve Gopal anymore. I am leaving him with you so that you may kindly look after him. Baba said, But where shall I find the necessary materials for his service? Do not bother about that. The things required for his service will come to you every day. The old woman thus spoke and went away. The same night, the old lady appeared before Baba in the form of Goddess Vrinda, the presiding deity of Vrindavan, in a dream and blessing. Baba then realized that Krishna had come to him and as promised never to leave him again in the form of Gopal. He served Gopal with devotion until the end. Baba was a sadhaka, a spiritual practitioner of Madhurya Ras. This became apparent from the manner in which he left his body. His last words were, 
Where is my lahanga? Lahanga, which is a loose garment for woman hanging from the waist downwards. Where is my anger, which is a cloth worn by woman from the head downwards up to the waist? Where is my trolley? The indication was that he had perhaps heard the foot of Krishna and was hastily preparing to meet him after stepping from his material body into his spiritual body, seated there in female form and dress. Jai Jai Krishna Das Babaji Ki Anyone like to share something? If I can share something, um, it's it's just so powerful the stories of the saints. Um, I think it's a big big blessing by uh, Kapoor who wrote down and found those biographies because they show us really that uh, that how powerful bhakti and bhajan can be that in the case of Jai Krishna Das Babaji even Krishna and Balram appeared at his door that uh, the Lord is so much drawn to his devotees and sometimes the mercy appears in our life I was thinking a little bit of see of course I'm talking from, from my platform where there's you know um, where they often arrange so merciful things for us and we don't really see it you know we always uh, are a bit blinded by our own understanding limited mind but I just feel like this um, story of Jai Krishna Das Babaji just, uh, you know, is so much uh, sweetness and, and relish to the heart that, you know, this is uh, actually happening in Braj. You know, those kind of sadhus are still walking and living in the forest of Vrindavan. Maybe they are lesser than uh, 200 years ago like when these biographies are mostly from, but there are still so many sadhus and so many saints living in the forest of Vrindava and doing Vajan, and they are the living examples of, um, of our tradition that um, we can just be very, feel very fortunate that we also see this in our own uh, family with um, the Buddha that often shares his early years when he was with his Guru Das Babaji and with his godbrothers like Radha Mohan Das Babaji, who also lived for 12 years in a kind of cave in Barsane. And before that, he lived also in the forest. Kesha Baba, who is living here with us, godbrother of Guru that also lived for, actually for many years in Kamyavan. The Baba often tells, that time there was no electricity, there was nothing, there was sometimes there was not even water or anything to eat for them. And the next village was some kilometers away. And in the rainy season, the rain would cover you know their knees. There was so much mud that they were not even able to walk to the next village to go for for begging for food, which is a, a cost culture here in Vrindavan and Braj. And those kind of uh, sadhana and bhajan they perform, you know, and actually the, the their stories is actually an not, it's not that we can become like them, but we can meditate on them. We can meditate on their leelas, their divine leelas, with Radha and Krishna, their stories, their life can become a, a meditation for us. And in that moment also, I feel we receive also their mercy. Like I can meditate on this 
story now of, of this of, of, of Jack and I feel already how it's um, how it's uplifting me. So I think this is really a beautiful that we have not only saints of the past but also saints of the present, and we can continue like you know meditating on their leaders which they have experienced with the. Maduri al microfono. Anyone likes to share something? Should you give me? Maybe? You throw that? Very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, it was so much touched by the story because so many things like my life because I know this is an impression. Can we say? This Baba received when Krishna and the came to his door. <laughs> and it was amazing that he's not recognized his Lord, but still, uh, Krishna and the Ram and others, Krishna is not left. There was so much, I'd say, desire to give his mercy to this command. I will have to explain here, there was so much attract his devotion. And even he even recognized him, he, he tried again and again of losing more water. It's, uh, actually, I don't want to speak so much, and there's a novel to speak, but just was so much touched by his. Uh, uh, It's, uh, muted. You're muted. You're muted. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, Shrida. Just when you called me, my internet broke. And uh, but thank you for calling me. I'm a happy listener today. I like to listen your your voice. Okay. <laughs> One thing I also just like to say. <laughs> That's one part. I get and all. I think also all the story of the saints, mostly of these saints. I'm sure that many of them are media the devotees, eternally liberated saints who came here only for a specific mission. And many, of course, also might be southern Sita. We don't know that, but I think that many stories they inspire us in our sadhana and uh, also teach us and give us examples. And that's one thing that I was thinking while I was reading is that he was in Bhajan in Vrindavan and the sour boys were coming to him and he could not recognize them. So of course we can elaborate many uh, different feelings behind this. But one simple thing that just comes in my mind that this is in Vrindavan actually. We never know, as Gopinath says, where mercy is coming from or from whom is coming from. And Gurudev said many times that we can never know who is a rickshawada, we can never know who is sitting in a shop looking like a businessman in a Roy Bazaar, we can never know someone uh, doing the queue for taking darshan in Banki Biari, we can never know a beggar. Radharani, one of her Sakis Gopis, the Krishna himself, can be high in any one of those bodies. We can never know with whom we are associating here in Vrindavan. And even Sri Krishna Das Baba could not recognize uh, Krishna and Balaram before his eyes always was a Siddha Mahatma. So of course what to say uh, about me. But at least when we are in Vrindavan, I think I should be with the right consciousness 
try to be like very, 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 very humble with everyone because we never know with uh, who we can be. Even we can be with uh, the Krishna supporting our rickshaw. So, so just uh, say this because sometimes I, I see myself maybe because of the different uh, society, not caste but levels. Let's say that we might have between the Western side of living and the Indians here. Of course, we have more presentations and money and everything. So even if we don't want by nature, because of our ego and our identification, we will always see little from up. Even if we don't want, this is natural because of our uh, living style. And just sometimes we see like I'm going around Vrindavan and there is some devotee, maybe Western devotee or taking a rickshaw and they're asking the price and the rickshaw says 100 rupees. And then the devotees are fighting, no, 80, 90, 70, like for 10, 20 rupees, you know, this kind of fighting or maybe trying to put the price in some shop. Of course, we know that it's not good to get cheated. <laughs> and we have a marketplace, we know that they are expert in that. But what I want to say is that I think it's good to um, have this consciousness that, that we can have like an associate of Radha Mohan always in front of our eyes here in Vrindavan. And always our attitude should be to, to serve them and to support them and to receive blessings from them to whoever we meet. Because if we do that, if we try to uh, touch their heart in a way with our humbleness and uh, our service, then they might reveal themselves who they are. And this also good to say one time, Always about the rich about us that always give more. If they ask 50, you give 70. Always give more. Because he knows, of course, it's good and this is also see the Mahatma, but even just on the uh, manifested Vrindavan here, all the things work, he knows very well because he did here since his birth. But receiving the blessings is a big mercy. Receiving blessing from the associates, but we never know also that who, whom we can meet. So, yeah, I just wanted to say this. Gerard, uh, okay, so we start the fourth story of Sri Krishna Das Babaji. It's a long story. Is a very important saint in our lineage who installed and uh, established different types of practice that we are also ourselves still following. So, I will explain it. In medieval India, worldly warfare between bandits was much involved. Once a South Indian bandit was going around the country challenging every famous bandit for Shastrata, which is discussion on the true intent of the Shastras, with a view to establish himself as Digvijay, which means world conqueror in Shastrata. After conquering the whole of South India, he came to Vrindavan. The pundits of Vrindavan did not have the courage to face him. But they also did not want that the South Indian pundit should get away with easy victory over Raja, which had been an important center of culture and learning for centuries. They thought that if he could be persuaded to go to Govardhan and challenge Siddha Sri Krishna Das Babaji, he would certainly be defeated. The risk, however, was that Sri Krishna Das Baba might, out of humility or on account 
of this preoccupation with Bhajan, accept the feet without entering into Shastrata. So they went and said to the Pandit, Most exalted sir, we are convinced of your extraordinary intelligence and learning. None of us is fit even to converse with you. But if you go to Govardhan and defeat Shri Krishna Das Baba in Shastrata, you would be automatically recognized as world conqueror, since he is known as the crest jewel of pandits all over India. But he will enter into Shastrata with you only if he considers you a suitable match for him. Otherwise, he will refuse to talk to you under some pretext or the other. You will then have to lure him by saying something disparaging against Raja, which would touch the softest corner of his heart and compel him to accept your challenge to save the honor of Raj. This was enough to entice the proud pundit to meet and compel Sri Krishna Das Baba to enter into Shastrata. He went to Krishna Das Baba in Govardhan and said, I have heard that you are recognized as the crest jewel of the pundits all over the country. I have come to challenge you to prove that you deserve this title by entering into Shastrata with me. I have already established my supremacy in South India. By defeating you, I wish to establish my supremacy in this part of the country as well. Baba says, what you have heard about me is not correct. Far from being a match for a great pundit like you, I am not fit even to sit at your feet. Shastrata with me has no meaning at all. The pundit thought that what he was told by the pundits of Vrindavan was perhaps correct. Baba was cleverly avoiding him because he did not consider him to be a suitable match for him. So he bars out. I have come here with the expectation that I will find someone in this great seat of culture and learning who would be a suitable match for me and with whom I could discuss the Shastras. But I find that there is not a single pandit here who can even recite the Vedas correctly. How disgraceful for Braj. Baba say, yes, it is true. There is no one here who can even recite the Vedas like you. Would you kindly recite some line of some of it? The pandit was only looking for an opportunity to show his extraordinary talent. He recited a Shruti mantra with great delight and gusto. To his surprise, Baba pointed out three faults in the Zwar, which means tone and extent of the recitation. The pandit said with indignation, I have yet to find a pandit in Bharat, India, who can recite the mantra better than me. Let me see how you recite this. Baba then recited the mantra in perfect Samadhiv style and Swar, which the pandit had never heard before. He was spellbound and could not restrain himself 
from falling at the feet of Baba and saying, Maharaj, you are invincible. There is no one in this world who can be a match to you. Your learning is not of this world. It is a gift from above. Truly, Baba's learning was not of this world. In fact, nothing relating to him was of this world. From the very beginning, his life was planned and embellished by powers that are not mundane. His saintly life itself was not planned by him. He was born in a rich family of Orissa, in the lineage of the great saint Srinarotantapur. When his father, Sanatan Kanu, uh, Kanunago, died, his mother became Sati. At the time of going to the funeral fire, she was in, a, in an exalted state. In that state, she charged her three sons to adopt three different ways of life. She charged her youngest son, Bad Krishna, to go to Vrindavan and do Bhajan. Bada Krishna was later known as Sita Krishna Das. A man who desires to renounce the world to live the life of a sadhu or sannyasi has to struggle with himself, with his parents, and with the world before renunciation. But Krishna Das Baba's sadhu way of life was already planned by spiritual forces. It came to him as a gift from his saintly mother. At the age of 16, he renounced the world and went to Vrindavan. After staying in Vrindavan for a couple of years, he went to Jaipur with a view to serve Govindaji. The Maharaj of Jaipur was pleased to appoint him as Pujari in the temple of Govindaji. He served Govindaji with devotion for eight or nine years. However, during this period, he was often pestered by sex and cults. This caused him great anxiety. He wondered how, although he had been taking Govindaji's prasad for so many years, he was still being plagued by sex desires. Was sex even more powerful than Govindaji prasad, which was Chinmai, transcendental, and was supposed to have the capacity to crush all material desires? There was no one in Jaipur who could provide an answer to this question. So he went to Braj and put his predicament before Jai Krishna Das Baba of Kamila. Baba said to him, Look, my son, wood, which is cut from a green tree and dipped in water, does not catch fire. Does it prove that fire doesn't have the capacity to burn? Fire always has the capacity to burn. But it burns the wood dipped in water only when it becomes dry. In order that it may become dry, it has to be put in fire constantly for some time. Similarly, the soul, Jiva, which has been immersed in the ocean of senseless enjoyment and sinful activities from times immemorial, has to free itself from the adverse effect by practicing bhakti sadhana for some time before it can realize the real nature and full and feel the full effect of the spiritual objects 
like the prashad of Govinda Ji. During sadhana, one must avoid eating anything which comes from a person indulging in senses or simple activities, even if it comes in the form of prashad of Govinda Ji. Don't you remember that Mahaprabhu refused to eat Jagannath Ji prashad? which Raghunadas purchased out of the money sent to him by his father and said, even Prashad purchased out of the money of a Pasha, worldly-minded person, invites Rajagun, the mode of passion. In this connection, Jai Krishna Das Baba narrated a story. He said, a prostitute of Bengal had a change of heart. She took Diksha from a Vaishnava guru and wanted to offer all her wealth to him. The guru advised her to go to Vrindavan and offer all her ornaments and wealth to Govindaju. So she went to Vrindavan. But when she expressed her desire to the Pujari of Govindaji, he refused to accept anything from her. This broke her heart. She decided to fast unto death. She went to the bank of Yamuna and lay there without taking even a drop of water for three days. On the fourth day, Govindaji appeared before the Pujari in a dream and say, you go to the bank of Yamuna where the prostitute is lying. Take all her wealth, purchase provisions and offer both to me. The Pujari did likewise. He offered both in a huge quantity and arranged for a grand feast. All the Vaishnavas were invited. The same night, the Vaishnavas had nocturnal emission. They got suspicious about the prashad they had taken the previous day. When, on inquiry from the Pujari, they found that the bowl to Govindaji that day was offered by the prostitute. There was no end to their agony. They started fasting to expiate for the sin committed in eating the bowl offered by the prostitute. On the third day of the feast, each of the Vaishnavas had a similar dream, in which Govindaji said, Why are you starving? Do you want to commit suicide? The Vaishnavas replied, What else can we do? When you accept the offerings of a prostitute, and we have to eat her food, because it comes to us in the form of her prashada, does that not destroy our dharma, religiousness? But we will the dream, so you, But when you can ask you to be the prostitute food, I can digest everything, but I do not ask you to eat everything that I eat, said Govindaji. If food offered by an impure person comes to us as your prashad, what should we do? Should we commit an offense for refusing it? Under the circumstances, you should take only a particle of it to obviate the offense, advised the wind. Baba further added, with regard to Govinda Ji's Prashad, you should act upon the advice of Govinda Ji himself. Because Govindaji's boat is made with the financial aid of the Maharaj. 
Who is a Vashya? Worthy minded person. Krishna Das took Jai Krishna Das Baba's advice to heart. He decided not to take the Vindadis Prashad. He left Jaipur and began to do bhajan in Domanban, a forest near Nandagram in Braj. He did not take prashad from any temple or ashram. He bagged wheat flour from Bratavasis, mixed some neem leaves in it, and added some water to make it like a bowl. He ate the bowl, sometimes baked, sometimes unbaked. The result was that he became weaker and weaker and lost his eyesight. He could no more go for begging. For a number of days, he lived only on the water of a pond nearby. In the end, he became so weak that it was not possible for him even to go to the pond. Two or three days passed without a drop of water. Then, Radharani's heart melted. She said to Lalita, her closest Saki friend, Don't you see Lalita? Krishna does to starve him. Would you let him starve like this and bring this grace to me? Take this towel, this plate of prashad, and go and feed him. Lalita took the towel of Prashad from Radharani's hand. She went to Gomanban in the guise of a Raja Bala, a Rajavasi girl, and said to Krishna Das, Baba, take this Prashad. My mother has taken pity on you and sent this. The sweet words of the girl and the unhurting smell of the Prashad gave you life to dying Krishna Das. He sat up and ate the prashad. After eating, he began to clean the palm. The girl asked, Baba, why don't you go for begging? Baba said, How can I go, Lali? My eyesight is gone. Will you go if the sight is restored? Look, my mother has sent an ointment. I shall apply to your eyes, and your sight will be restored. As she said this, she touched his eyes with her finger. With a soft and soothing touch of her finger, Baba's sight was fully restored. He could see everything. Another girl in the tally, which he had cleaned just before, both had mysteriously disappeared, but their heavenly smell still filled the environment. Who was that girl? Where had she come from? How did she suddenly disappear? And how the mere touch of her finger restored his sight. All these remain a mystery to him. He kept restlessly musing on this for three days. On the third day at night, when he was half asleep, he saw that suddenly his cottage was aglow with divine light and filled with divine fragrance. Radharani stood before him with a sweet smile on her face. She said in her, <clears throat> in her ambrosial voice, Now what are you musing about? No more worry and fear for you. You have attained the end of your life. 
from now on, I'm yours in your mind. With the touch of the hand of my Saiki Lalita, you have been blessed not only with Drishti Shakti, power to see, but with all other Shaktis, powers. Now go to Govardhan and find an easy path for my attainment for the Vaishnavas having faith in me. After saying this, Radharani disappeared. For a long time, her words, I am yours and your mind, kept resounding in his ears, and he kept swimming freely in the ocean of love that seemed to flow from them. The whole night it was tossed up and down by the waves of the ocean, and his body was shaken by powerful undercurrents of Sattika Bhavas. In the morning, he somehow collected himself and went to Govardhan. There, he began to live in a place called Chakaleshwara. Though Baba was now accomplished in bhajan, he could not do anything except bhajan. For though bhajan is a means, it is also an end in itself. Even Bhagavan is always engaged in bhajan. While the devotee does the bhajan of Bhagavan, Bhagavan does the bhajan of the devotee. During those days, there were a number of Vaishnavas in Radhakund and Govardhan who did bhajan on the basis of the Sanskrit works of Sri Rupa, Sri Sanatan, and the other Goswamis. Krishna Das Baba also wanted to do the same, but he didn't know Sanskrit. Therefore, he started learning Harina Manmuita Vyakarna from Anol Vaishnavas which is a Sanskrit grammar compiled by Sri Jiva Goswami. But he soon found himself in a predicament. He felt that his study was a hindrance in bhajan, and bhajan was a hindrance in study. He could not reconcile the two, but he could neither leave bhajan, nor study. The problem became so acute and painful that he began to think of committing suicide by drowning in Manasidanga. That night, he heard someone calling, Krishna Das, Krishna Das, from outside his booty, his cottage. Coming out of the Puti, he saw Sanatan Goswami and Lalita Devi standing before him. He was overwhelmed with joy and bewilderment. He lay prostrate at their feet and did not know what to do. Sanatan Goswami said, fondly wrapping his hand on his head, Krishna Das, how are you? Do you get Madhukari all right? Yes, Prabhu, replied Krishna Das with folded hands. Then Sanatan Goswami said, Look, Shastras are infinite. One needs not to die, 
because he cannot learn them all. I bless that from today you do not have to learn any Shastra. All the Shastras themselves illumine their heart. Do not think of committing suicide. We have a great mission to be fulfilled to you. Lalita said, I bless that whenever you remember us, your heart will be in your mind by our presence. And a new method of bhajan be unfolded by you for the benefit of the Vaishnavas residing in Raj. After this, both touch Krishnadas Baba's head with their feet and disappear. Now Krishna Das Baba, instead of learning Harinaman Rita of the Karana, started teaching to the students. He also started giving instructions in a new method of Lila Smara, contemplation of Divine Lila, devised by him, in which the Pastayama Lila of Radha Krishna as described in Govinda Lilamrita, Shankalpa Kalpa Dhruma, Krishna Daiviti Chintamani, Krishna Bhavanamrita, and other scriptures, is meditated upon along with the Astayama Lila of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In Astayama Lila Smarana, the Sadaka imagines himself to be in the transcendental body, Sita Deya, appropriate for the type of bhakti to which he is naturally inclined, and to be serving Radha Krishna day and night through that body. By constant meditation or smarana, he makes the whole of Raj Lila live before him. He enters into that Lila in his imagination and by serving Radha and Krishna according to the particular path or mode of bhakti adopted by him, lives in the ecstasy of that vicarious enjoyment. That imaginary transcendental body, Siddhadeya, however, is not only imaginary, it is a mental reflection of the transcendental body which Bhagavan, out of infinite kindness, imparts to the devotee. That the transcendental body is a gift of Bhagavan is corroborated by the second line of Sloka 3911 of Srimad Bhagavatam, which runs as follows. Yadya diya ta urugaya dibhavayanti tata vapuhu pranayase sat anugayaha. The Vaishnavas from Baba gave instruction. Sorry, there is a Note for the verse. Sri Chakravarti interprets the text to mean that Bhagavan imparts to the devotee a transcendental body exactly like the one which he imagines himself to possess and which is essential for the particular mode of bhakti practiced by him. Because he is bound to do so on account of his always being subservient to the devotee. The Vaishnavas whom Baba gave instruction to Nastatelita Smarana assembled every evening in his cottage and reported about their bhajan. One day, 
one of the Vaishnavas, instead of reporting anything, started weeping. When Baba inquired about the cause of weeping, he said, Baba, I could not do any bhajan today. In my morning, Lila's Maran, when I was ornamenting the right arm of Radharani, my mind was so engrossed in the lustrous beauty of her arm that I tried very much to disengage my mind, but could not. And Smara could not proceed further. Baba said to him encouragingly, only your bhajan today has been successful. Many stories are current about Baba's own bhajan city or accomplishment in bhajan. Once in his maran, Baba was participating in the holy lila of Radha Krishna. In the lila, his body was smeared with pulao, vermilion, a story, musk, and colors of different kinds. When he went out of his kutir after Smaran, he was still out conscious. People were surprised to see him color through and through and to smell the fragrance of transcendental musk emanating from his body. <laughs> when any effect of the divine lila on the transcendental body appears on the physical body, that is regarded as a sign of city or accomplishment in bhajan. Once Baba saw in his smaran the Radha Krishna had just come out of the Manasiganda after Jal Kelly, Dalians in water. Lalita, Vishaka, and the other Sakis were busy dressing and adorning them. Rupananjari and others were collecting material for adornment. Krishna Das Baba was standing by in his Siddhar Manjari form with a field of shant uh, in his hands. When he heard Radha Krishna talking mirthfully and jestingly, he was so overwhelmed with love that he began to tremble and the fire of shant fell from his hand and broke. Its fragrance spread all over. People who came to bathe in the Manasiganga were surprised to scent a sweet and heavenly smell such as they had never experienced before. When they heard from Baba about it, he said, what should I say? I am an aparadi, an offender. I am not fit for the service of Priya Priyata, my most beloved Radha and Krishna. Mm -hmm. At the time of their service, I let fall the fire of Shen from my hand. The smell you are scenting is the fragrance of the same. Once Baba went to bathe in the Manasiganga with Karava in hand. It's an earthen pot. He saw Priya Priyatam dwelling in the water. He was so overwhelmed with Baba that he jumped into the fathomless waters of Manasiganga. No one else was there at that time. When he did not reach back to his cottage for a long time, his disciples began to search for him, but he could not be found. There was wailing and crying all over crowd, but they were all surprised and happy when they saw him coming out of Manasiganda after seven days. When they asked him where he had been for seven days, he was amazed and said, Seven days? Why? I'm just coming out after my bed. This seems to explode the old principle 
of absoluteness of space and time and confirm the new scientific principle of relativity of space and time. Baba had entered a world where the dimensions of space and time are altogether different. But the transcendental world of Radha and Krishna transcends even the scientific principle of relativity. We are told by Shastras that in that world, space and time also serve Radha and Krishna. They expand and contract according to their wish. Once Jasvanta Singh, the Raja of Bharatpur, went to see the Krishna Das Baba and said, Baba, I want to render some service. Kindly let me know what can I do for you. Baba said, we start to get Madhukari from the Rajabasis. You can serve us by serving them. The Raja gave much land and fortune to the Rajabashis in arms for which they expressed their gratefulness to him even today. After that, he came to Baba again and said, I shall be blessed if you also kindly accept something. Inscrutable are the ways in which the Siddha saints sometimes behave. Baba said, if you are so keen on my service, do one thing. I have a large number of queens. Send to me the queen you love most. The Raja obeyed. His dearest queen, Rani Lakshmi, came to Baba, surrounded on all sides by curtains, so that no one except Baba could see her. As soon as the jingling sound of the kinking and Nupur angled us of the Rani resounded in Baba's ears, he was reminded of Radharani's Kinkini and Nupur and was transported into ecstasy. With eyes wide open, he kept looking at her as if looking at Radharani. The Rani also stood stuck, stuck still, benumbed and ostended at a distance of about eight or ten yards from him. This continued for about three hours. The female attendants of the Rani, out of anxiety and curiosity, lifted the curtains a little to see what was happening. They were surprised to see that the Rani was standing still in a half-conscious state and Baba was constantly looking at her. They reported this to the Raja. The Raja came and took the Rani away. For how long could she remain standing motionless like a statue? But Baba continued sitting in the same state the whole day and night. The next day he became out conscious and the third day fully conscious. The Raja had no knowledge of the state of Baba, transcendental emotion, in the higher stages of Bhakti. So, the whole affair aroused suspicion in his mind. Baba then called him, placed his hand upon his forehead, and blessed him. Immediately, his suspicion was gone. He realized that the sweet sound of the kinkini and nupu of the Rani had acted as Uttipan Vibhav, enchanting accident, and placed in Baba's mind the consciousness of Radha Rani, and that for two days continually he was absorbed in the darshan of Radha Rani in place of the Queen. 
this episode brought about a total change in Iran election. Standing before Baba for three hours, she had felt that Baba was instilling bhakti into her heart through his eyes. From a Rani given to luxurious living, she became a devotee. The stories of her devotion are still remembered in Raj. Once she went to Radhakun with a view to spend a large amount of money in the service of the Vaishnav sadhus living there. But the sadhus say they could not accept the service of a queen. This brought tears in her eyes. She said, kindly bless me so that in my next life, I am not born in a royal family, but in a family in which I am considered fit for the service of the Vaishnavas. This moved the Vaishnavas. They said, you can do one thing. If you prefer cow and cakes with your own hands and sell them, we can accept the money you thus earned yourself. Rani did the same. Baba used to hear Bhakti Shastras read out to him by capable Vaishnavas. It is said that at the time of hearing the path, he used to be so much overwhelmed with Sattvika Bhavas that he would have an uh, incessant flow of tears from his eyes. Blood from his nose and saliva from his mouth. Two persons sitting on either side of him continuously tried to wipe his face but could not. There was hardly any Vaishnava in Raj who did not go to Baba for advice regarding Bhajan. Though Baba was himself always absorbed in Bhajan, he welcomed everyone and encouraged him in Bhajan by giving him necessary instructions. Most of the sadhakas whom Baba gave instructions in Bhajan became Siddha. Prominent among them were Krishna Das, the second of Govardhan, Nityananda Das of Madan Mohan Thakur, Param Das of Janumandal, and Lala Babu, Krishna Das the third. Jai Shri Krishna Das Babu Ji If anyone likes to show something, an inspiration. So, so, 
So impressive story. And also I found myself in the spirit because I struggled so much when the subject of the spirit is that you came to the sudden of the group. How can I not eat prasadam, but I feel prasadam and have this problem? It's my story. I should be the Sadhu Sadhana. Sadhu must be very careful. Sadhu Sadhana. 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 Sadhu must be careful. So, Radha was saying that. It's very difficult to, to find words because these stories of the saints go very deep. They leave a very deep imprint into our sadhaka's heart. And uh, Siddha Krishna Das Babaji's stories is just, you know, out of this world, so transcendental. And at the same time, it's showing that. Mahaprabhu's kripa, that in the human body we can experience this by the grace of Gurudev and, and Radharani when we receive our spiritual form and we start practicing, then this also can be expressed through the body. And the more have, more feelings grow, and the more actually the Smaran, the meditation of the Leela, the more we hear and chant and remember the Leelas, the more we can also, like, you know, start feeling. Of course, Siddhartha Swamiji is like the topmost example of what it means to live in the spiritual spiritual body. But at the same time, as um, Shri was, uh, when he was reading the beginning, I felt that was so important that how Baba was humble. His humility was extraordinary. And whenever you meet a sadhu in our tradition, whenever you meet a sadhu, when you feel his humility, that's actually the sign how high elevated they are. Because the more humble, the more actually they are elevated. And I see this also in our living place here in, in, in Munger Mandir, also with, of course, with Guru Dev, with Kesha Baba, they are the, the Seno Das Anudas, the lowest, like the servant of the servant of the servant. They, they, are the, they always take the junior position. They always play the junior position, even if they are like, like Krishna Das Babaji, practicing so deep bhajan, but they will always keep respect in the Navasari. And this is also what um, Sridhar said today, when we are living in Vrindavan and we sometimes go out, we, we think we know, but we actually don't know who, who are here all, what kind of Siddhas, souls, Mahatmas, Mahajans are living here as ordinary people, and what, you know, what kind of powerful Bhajan Sadhana they are doing. And they don't appear to us, you know, we are looking maybe for the glamour, but actually we should look for those who are the most humble, the most who are about bowing down the most here. They are actually the ones who give the kripa. From their lotus so feet, we should try to search the mercy. And I think this, these stories are just, as I said, giving very deep impressions and, and giving hope. And, 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 you know, giving energy, giving really the, the mercy. When you read, we receive actually this mercy. The story, these are not biographies. Yes. These are really, you know, this is, these are um, treasures, jewels. These are jewels on the string of Mahaprabhu's uh, necklace. You know, like this sound, like Yashida said, 
some of them are really, maybe they are already need us and they're just here to help us, you know, and uh, so we should always be very grateful and humble in our own life and, and try, you know, kind of emulate the path they have laid for us, you know. This the Kesha Baba, I like when he said that their bhajan, this bhajan of these sadhus, of the Goswamis, of Mahaprabhu's followers, or of Krishna's followers, their, their, the fruits of their bhajan we are receiving today, the, the, the fruits of their sadhan, of their intense practice, their intense desire to live in their spiritual form and to do smaran, the, 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 the fruits that we're getting at today, and this book is one of those fruits, I feel, which we have received. Thank you.